two panel on what is spam. I I did a, this exact kind of session like five years ago and kind of stopped doing it because at some point it was like, okay, everybody knows what it is that this, you know, everybody's kind of figured it out. And the reason it started was in particular, we would have um, new people who would come to the conference and they'd be absolutely paranoid that they were going to accidentally spam the search engines. Like they're like, oh, I used the word and twice accidentally as a typo. That's keyword repetitive repetition, so am I going to be banned? And we're like, no, you don't really understand what spam is. You're really not going to accidentally do it. Um, people who spam the search engines know exactly what they've done, by and large. And so we would go through some examples, we'd have the search engine come up, and then people go, oh, wow, now I understand what you're battling up against. So it seemed time to kind of come back and review this. So uh, we're going to go through, show you some examples of what search engine spam is, talk about why the search engines uh, fight out against it, um, the things that they're doing to combat it, what their recommended guidelines are, and we have plenty of time for discussion after that. Uh, to start us off, Nathan Bugia from um, Live Search, I think I like title, Live Search Webmaster Central from Microsoft Live Search is going to come up and give us a uh, look at both what Microsoft does and also what all the search engines do as their uh, guidelines together. So if you please welcome Nathan. So what is spam and why do we have webmaster guidelines? If you think about what a search engine does, our whole role in life is to find the best content on the web and bring it together with people who are looking for that content. So to do that, we've invented a couple algorithms that try and figure out what people think is good content and think what is trustworthy content. Um, and spam very specifically is websites that um, violate one of a predefined set of rules that we have or tactics that we've found that try and manipulate those processes that we've defined um, to make themselves seem like they're better content or seem like they're more authoritative or more relevant. Um, now you might recognize spam on the web if you've ever uh, looked for certain things like you know link building campaigns, uh, free money, stuff like that on the internet. Um, this is an example of a, of a website that I found that has uh, guaranteed 10,000 visitors um, in an hour. All it takes is $35 every month. Now that's pretty awesome. I don't know, 10,000 visitors, that's more than my blog gets. Um, the problem is the way they go about um, and get those visitors and get those links. Generally not the customers you're looking for um, and generally not uh, a way that's approved by search engines. Um, another one of my favorites, uh, this one, don't ever write any content again for your website. This RSS to blog, the automated blog poster, they'll actually go out and steal content from other blogs around the web, kind of, you know, massage it a little bit, make it their own, and then allow you to automatically post it on your own blog. And once you uh, put enough advertisements around that and do that enough times, the idea is that you could be rich, 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 rich. Um, and then another one of my favorite ones is uh, Phantom Cloaker. So these gentlemen have uh, claimed to invented a system that will show one set of results or one set of content to a search engine and another set of content to users. But that content that they show to search engines is so, it's like crack for search engines. Um, it gets them to just come and make your website the best website ever. And nothing makes a uh, boxed product more reputable than putting a skull on it. Um, I don't know, just a little observation. So these are things that, that we think of typically as spam. Things that you know, will get you a large number of links to make, make your website look like it's really popular. Things that will add a lot of content to your website automatically that will make it seem like there's a lot of stuff on your website. Um, and then things that may more obviously trick, uh, trick a crawler into thinking that your website is something that it's not. Um, what spam isn't, there's a lot of stuff that gets uh, a lot of times kind of lumped into that group, but it's not spam at all. Um, so there's pornography and junk. So this pornography is pretty, it's pretty straightforward. But the junk is a little bit more um, hard to identify sometimes. And this is a page where there really isn't a whole lot of content on the page. It could be a very thin page, or it could just be a page of all ads. These aren't spam, and we don't think of these as spam in our index, um, although they are also detected automatically and generally filtered out of most results, unless you're specifically looking for them. Um, so when, I, when, uh, when we define spam, I said that it's really something that, uh, it's content that violates, or the live search definition of spam is, is content on the web that violates a very specific set of rules. And these are kind of the, the general purpose of those rules. So, Essentially, there's a, a couple things that are on-page manipulation of your content, and then there's...